Here at Robitech, we test a lot of GPUs, and it's only natural that we all start to gravitate towards brands that we know and love. But as a trusted source of everything and anything PC, and someone who uses literally almost everything, it's important to remember to give love and to highlight brands that might get often overlooked. Enter Gigabyte GPUs. Listen, I'm not your dad, so I'm not gonna tell you what to do with your money. I am, however, gonna give you some tech fatherly advice to help you understand Gigabyte GPUs just a little bit better and offer some thoughts on why they might be worth considering for your next GPU upgrade. So, if you like dad jokes and you wanna demystify how much WinForce fans can force, if they do in fact WinForce, you're gonna wanna stick around. Well, I said it earlier and I'm gonna say it again. We all have brands that we love simply because we're comfortable with them. I have them, my team has them, my dad has them, and you know what, so do you. Is that a problem? Definitely not. But it does prevent us from getting to know brands that are doing some exciting things in the space. And we're doing more than just talking the talk today, we're walking the walk as we look at the few GPUs within Gigabyte's product stack that often get overlooked. We've heard you guys wondering about Nvidia's new 40 series super GPUs and if one of them might be worth using in your next upgrade. And thanks to Gigabyte, we have a few of these GPUs to help you come to that conclusion. In this video, we're gonna focus on two specific series of GPUs from Gigabyte. They're Gigabyte Gaming and Gigabyte Eagle series. We're gonna take a broad look at the entire landscape of Gigabyte's product stack. But it's worth starting with this. We think these GPUs might be important for anyone looking to maximize their performance per dollar without sacrificing too much in the way of features. Now, before we get started, I need to say this on the front end. This is not a review. This is an introduction and an overview of the Gigabyte brand of GPUs. This is also not sponsored. Though we did get some of these GPUs, our goal here is to give you an overview of the GPUs from Gigabyte and to help anyone who's interested in figuring out what's what when it comes to Gigabyte. We hope you stick around. You might just learn a thing or two along the way that you may have never known about Gigabyte GPUs. Okay, let's start with a little bit of an overview of Gigabyte's entire product stack to give you a better idea of what you're looking at. For context, Gigabyte currently has 109 modern AMD and NVIDIA-based GPU models within their roster. And we'll be looking at every single one of them in this video. I'm completely kidding. As cool as that would be, I do have somewhere I need to be tomorrow. Just to finish this thought though, of those 109 modern GPUs, 23 of them are a part of the new RTX 40 series super family. As we get started, if you've done any research on Gigabyte GPUs, you may have noticed that they list both OC or overclocked and non-OC GPUs on their website. We actually had a hard time tracking down where to get the non-OC cards, so we asked them directly, and apparently most non-OC models don't find their way to North America. But Gigabyte has tried to keep their OC counterparts priced around MSRP, which is Honestly, good on you, Gigabyte, and that's a nice change compared to some of the other manufacturers. We'll talk about just how much overclocking these cards have in the moment, but first, let's take a look at what makes each one of Gigabyte's GPU series different. To break it down, Gigabyte has five major series. They've got WinForce, Eagle, Gaming, Arrow, and Aorus. And that order, with a small exception that we're gonna talk about here in a minute, is how Gigabyte has positioned these cards, with WinForce being the entry point and Aorus being the pinnacle of the Gigabyte experience. Today, we're gonna focus on the GPUs in the middle of the stack, but we're gonna touch on a few details about the other GPUs here too. As a starting point, WinForce GPUs are pretty simple. These GPUs come in in either two or three fan designs without RGB, but with a slight overclock above NVIDIA's reference GPUs. Essentially, these are no fuss, just give me the power GPUs. If the WinForce series is the starting point, the Eagle series is where Gigabyte really starts digging in on overclocking. These GPUs are often the ones that people get tripped up on because they are priced conservatively close to the WinForce GPUs, but they have a few actual more features. And this is why we're making this video, which by the way, if you like videos like this, would you like a majestic Eagle snatching a salmon out of the paws of a bear, slap that like button, whip that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so that you don't miss videos like this, reviews, build guides, etc., and all the fun dad jokes that come along the way. Okay, so let's go back to the Eagle. The GPU, not the salmon snatching one, though I really do hope that somebody was able to find a video of that actually happening. Not only do the Eagle GPUs have some subtle RGB accents, but they have more stylized shrouds all up. 
Also in the series, Gigabyte introduces new white ice variants, which are super cool. And yes, I did just make the obvious temperature pun here, and I'm not even sorry. Eagle GPUs are overclocked slightly higher than WinForce GPUs, and this trend continues as we continue up the stack. In addition, Eagle GPUs support a dual BIOS mode that allows both performant and a silent operation, in case you need to keep things extra quiet. They also have a power indicator LED that will flash if the GPU notices any abnormalities from your PC's power supply. Now remember that comment I made about the exception in the order of the product stack? This is where we have a bit of a fork in that road. On one side of that fork, we find the ever aesthetic Aero GPUs, and on the other side of that fork, we have the gaming GPUs. The Aero series stands out with its stunning white and silver shroud, as well as its subtle pastel branding. Like the Eagle, it has a dual BIOS, power indicator, and an overclock slightly above that of the Eagle series. The gaming series sports a stylized black shroud with insert Halo RGB around the fans. Gaming series GPUs also have overclocking speeds that match the Aero GPU, all while also carrying the features of each of the previously mentioned series moving forward. On a side note, when we saw the design of the gaming series, we initially thought they were actually Aorus cards, which again is why we're making this video to clear up any confusion. Following the gaming and Aero GPUs, we arrive at the outer edges of Gigabyte's GPU stack and start entering the land of Aorus. But we're gonna leave those GPUs and their bionic shark fans for a whole nother video. Okay, one other thing I wanted to point out before we jump any further. One additional difference point out here is the warranty coverage. Gigabyte offers a three-year limited warranty on all their GPUs, which can be activated by registering your GPU via Gigabyte's website. And if you're curious, all you have to do is put in your, your uh, serial number and you can search on their website and it'll actually tell you when the current warranty currently ends. However, here's the deal. If you purchase a gaming, Arrow, or Aorus GPU, those models are eligible for an extra year of coverage, making the coverage period four years instead of three. It's a little thing, but it's Gigabyte's way of saying thank you for teaming up with them. Now that we have a broad picture of Gigabyte's GPU series and what sets them apart, let's actually talk about the overclocking. When we look across the roster of new super GPUs, we saw this interesting piggybacking happening with the core clock speeds. Together with the 4070 Super, the WinForce was 1.21% faster than NVIDIA's Founders Edition GPU. The Eagle was about 1.18% faster than the WinForce series, and then the gaming and aero cards were about 1.18% faster than the Eagle series, and the Aorus Master RTX 4070 Super took about a 3.51% leap over the gaming and aero series. Using the 4070 Ti Super, it was even more consistent. We saw about a 0.57 increase across the board as you went up from WinForce to Eagle, from gaming and aero, and then all the way up to Aorus, again, being about 0.5% higher as you went up the stack, which was kind of freaky. As for the 4080 Supers, in the absence of the OC models in the WinForce and Eagle series, we were left to examine the gaming and aero GPUs along the Aorus Master RTX 4080 Super. The speed increase from the gaming and the Aero GPUs to the Aorus was about 1.16%. When compared to the NVIDIA RTX 4080 Super Founders Edition, the gaming and Aero GPUs had a 1.76% clock increase and the representative from the Aorus camp was about 2.94% faster than the reference GPU. Essentially, what we're seeing here is that Gigabyte cards are not all form without function. They have both features and aesthetics as well as reliable performance as you move up the stack. Now, of course, these numbers are gonna vary from card to card, but at least this gives you an idea of how big of a separation there is across models, and it's up to you, the buyer, to determine if the boost and the features are enough to warrant the individual price hikes. Now, those numbers are great, but it's hard to kind of understand. So how about actual gaming performance? Well, let's break it down without getting crazy. At 1440p in a cinematic title like Cyberpunk 2077, we saw an average of around 90 frames per second from the RTX 4070 Super. We got 101 frames per second on the 4070 Ti Super and 115 frames per second on the 4080 Super. These numbers were recorded all with ray tracing, ultra settings, and with DLSS set to auto. In Forza Horizon 5, we saw an average of around 146 frames per second from the RTX 4070 Super, 161 from the 4070 Ti Super, and 178 from the 4080 Super at extreme settings with DLSS set to auto. In more competitive titles like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, we maximized our settings for high frame rates by turning everything down. 
In these benchmarks, we saw an average of around 281 frames per second on the 4070 Super, 292 from the 4070 Ti Super, and 296 from the 4080 Super. And finally, in Fortnite, the 4070 Super gave us averages of around 434 frames per second, the 4070 Ti Super gave us around 494, and the 4080 Super gave us 505. Now that we better understand the Gigabyte landscape and the performance of the 40 series Super GPUs, who are each of these Gigabyte GPUs right for? Since we only have the Eagle and the gaming GPUs here in the studio with us, it's only fair that we talk about these two for now. Now, as we just mentioned in the overclocking overview, the difference in the core clock speeds between these two is marginal. While that may translate into a couple frames per second here and there, it's not enough to discourage potential buyers from choosing either an Eagle or a gaming GPU. The price separation between them is marginal too. The difference in pricing between the Eagle GPU and the gaming GPUs were around $20 at the time of recording this video. Now let's dig into how we can help you decipher which GPU might be right for you. Let's say that you're builder number one, the min-maxer. You try to squeeze every dollar to build the best PC your money can buy, and you really want to use a Gigabyte GPU. As a baseline, the Eagle OC is a good choice for you, but since you're a builder trying to maximize performance and probably prioritizing a GPU in your budget, you could choose a different SSD or RAM if you had them in your build plan, drop cable extensions out for now. By doing this, you might find a creative way to get an extra $20 margin to upgrade to your gaming overclock card and have a little bling along with that dual BIOS and all that other stuff. But let's say you're builder number two, the aesthetic appreciator. Like the min-maxer, you are also trying to make every dollar count in a mid-range enthusiast build, but it's imperative that your build is an Arctic white one that is crisper than a McDonald's Sprite. One of those Aero GPUs might be perfect, but they aren't quite within your budget. If you're builder number two, you might be a little sad until you remember that the Inkle GPUs now come in an ice flavor, or at least in Gigabyte's new ice color design. And the best part, the 4070 Super Ice is only $10 more than the standard Eagle card. Or maybe you're finally builder number three, the RGB aficionado. You love RGB and you need your GPU to light up like a Christmas tree year round. This is how you know that you're working at peak performance because we all know the more lights, the faster the PC. If that's you, then the Gigabyte OC GPUs might just have enough extra RGB without having to pay a whole lot of extra to get it. And you won't be sacrificing any performance either. Maybe none of these are you, or maybe they all are. And we just made this a whole lot more confusing. Are there really one size fits all recommendations? Absolutely not. You may like one aesthetic over the other, or certain features may be more important to you than others. We wanna provide you with the information that you may not have had before. What you do with it is up to you, and we hope we cleared up the confusion along the way. But we saw some interesting comments in our ASUS version of this video series, which you can check out right here, and you can't consider these hard recommendations. These are guidelines to help you make decisions and make it easier for you to choose from the literally hundreds of options that are actually out there. We want to give a huge shout out to Gigabyte for providing us with their Eagle Gaming Series GPUs to check out. And you know what? For sitting down with us to talk about the brands and answer some of our questions so we can make it a little bit clearer for you. We hope that you enjoy this video format because we love helping to demystify tech that can help you actually enjoy the tech you buy. Let us know if you learned something from this video about Gigabyte GPUs GPUs down in the comments below. And let us know what brands you'd love us to cover in upcoming videos. Don't worry, we got PNY and Zotac on the way. Now, while you're down there, go ahead and slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring the notification bell so that you get a notification each and every time we post a video like this right here on Robitech. And while you're at it, if you want to be part of the conversation about PC parts, PC builds, and neat tech, why don't you join our Discord server over at discord.gg slash Robitech or follow me on all the social platforms at Robitech absolutely everywhere. We super appreciate you watching this video and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.